Are you tired of your circumstances being able to tell you how to feel? Some days you feel up and everything's great and some days something bad will happen and you feel down and life feels like this roller coaster of up and down emotions. Well, if you are sick and tired of it, then watch this video because I'm going to share how Jesus' circumstances didn't dictate to him, they obeyed him. And exactly the same can happen for you today, my friend. Hi there, I'm Lisa Vandenberg from Salt Solutions Coaching, empowering the 2.0 version of you, taking you to that abundant life that Jesus paid for you to live. So if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing this video, joining us on the journey, and share it with your friends. Let's send good news to those we love and care about. So the other day I was sitting with the Lord, uh, thinking through how circumstances can dictate how we feel, right? So first of all, the first thing we need to know is that emotions are perfectly legitimate. They are given to us from God. The emotions that you can read all through the Bible, the emotions of joy and sorrow and anger and delight and love, they're all emotions that everybody, including Jesus, experienced. Even in the Old Testament, we hear about God experiencing these emotions. So the beautiful thing is that emotions are a gift that has been given to us. When we look at the life of Jesus, we see, however, that Jesus experienced emotions. He just never let them rule his life. So when you are faced with a circumstance where uh, something you were believing for didn't seem to happen and it makes you feel sad, like perhaps you're believing for enough money to pay your mortgage payment at the end of this month. And the way you thought it would happen or the job that you thought would come through or even believing like somebody would give you money and it didn't come through. And those emotions, they, they rise up and then they threaten to make you feel like you haven't got enough faith or you can't trust God or you just go through the day depressed. Realize that there is a switch between not feeling great about something and then letting it rule your life and the way you experience a day, a week, a month, right? The beautiful thing is that because of who Jesus is and because the power that has been given to you, my friend, to rule over your circumstances, you can experience the emotions but not be ruled by them. So Jesus would experience things like being disappointed when his disciples didn't pray with him, didn't stay awake with him when he was on the Mount of Gethsemane, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He would experience um, the joy of fellowship around him when he and the disciples were hanging out and doing things. He'd experience the, the hurt when Judas betrayed him. He'd experience the, the anger when he got into the temple and found out that the money changers were just using it as a place of commerce and not a place to worship God. So many emotions that Jesus went through. But you can see that he experienced them and then he took dominion over them. And the beautiful thing is that he didn't even need to try so hard. He so knew who he was and so believed that God, his father, would help him in the circumstance, had better plans than what he could see in front of him, that the, the overall picture was for good and for God's plan and his glory, that he was able to go, you know what, I may feel this way now, but God has a bigger plan. And I'm going to go with feeling about the bigger plan the way he does, rather than feeling about the current circumstance the way I do. Ah, such a nugget of gold right there, right? Jesus felt emotions, but he wasn't ruled by them. Jesus' emotions weren't dictated by his circumstances. They obeyed him in those circumstances. So he was able to say to himself, he was able to go in and see, for instance, when Lazarus had, had been dead for three days, the Lord told him to wait. The Holy Spirit told him to wait and not go immediately. So he waited. He knew he was going to get there to grieving people. He knew he was going to get there to Lazarus being dead and not smelling so great after a couple of days. He knew a lot of the circumstances that he'd walk into. But even then, knowing those circumstances, he walked into them with a full knowledge that God, his father, had told him to wait. There was something specific that God wanted to do. Whether, God, whether Jesus knew about it or not, I don't know. But he knew that God had, had a bigger plan than Jesus rushing in and getting Lazarus raised from the dead straight away. Right? Jesus goes in and he weeps. He feels the emotion of everyone around him. He weeps for the sadness that the sisters felt, that the people around and that loved Lazarus felt. But then he, t he takes that weeping and he goes, okay, everybody clear out. Right? And then he speaks to Lazarus and Lazarus comes back alive again. Think about it. Jesus dealt with the rebuke of the sisters. Jesus, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. He dealt with the mass 
um, grief of Lazarus's friends and the people around him. He dealt with the unbelief, the disbelief of being able to raise somebody from the dead after so long of being dead. It was a hot climate. He, he didn't smell good already. The body had already started decomposing, right? Jesus deals with all of those circumstances in front of his eyes that looked impossible. But, other, but no matter what, he goes in and he goes, it may look like this, but this is the truth of what's happening. I may feel this way now, but this is the truth of what my father once done. I may see all of these people's reaction and feel their unbelief right now, but this is the truth of what my father in heaven says. And as that happens, he then took from that place and said to Lazarus, get up and walk out of there. And Lazarus was raised from the dead. So whatever circumstances you're in today, realize that it is perfectly legitimate to feel the motion in that initial reaction in our humanity to the situation that's going on in front of us. We can absolutely feel the motion. But then realize when it starts getting to the place where that emotion begins to rule you, go, mm -mm, no, this is not what rules me. God's truth is what rules me. His goodness, your faithfulness, your kindness, that is what rules these circumstances. And from that powerful place, just like Jesus did, you get to say to your circumstances, you may look one way now, but wait and see what my God is going to do. See how he changes it. See how he causes it to work together for good. See how he brings goodness and kindness and shows his faithfulness to you in the longer term circumstances that you can see now. This, my friends, is a powerful way to live. This is how Jesus' circumstances did not dictate to him, but they obeyed him instead. And exactly the same can be done by you because of what Jesus did for you. So as always, Jesus is inviting you on an adventure today. Will you accept? Come across and visit us at saltsolutionscoaching.com. Let's book a coaching session where we can walk you through circumstances in your life that seem to be so uh, all-consuming to you in the emotion of what's going on, so much so that you can't walk past it. And let's get you unstuck. Let's get you back on the path of the truth of what God has said and get you accelerated and moving forward in the plans and purposes that he has for your amazing life. So as always, I will see you next time. Bless you, bless you, bless you.